We often use the word commune when describing the idea and practice of spending time with God. The word commune has many facets to it. It can mean having a conversation, which can happen internally and externally. David the psalmist says this in Psalm 4 and verse 4, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, from the King James Version. In both cases, it means to go deeper than the surface. It means to go beyond the superficial and into the depths of understanding of oneself or the other person you're communing with. Beyond verbal communication, it means being close and in personal contact where you can sense the other person nearby. We read of a depressing moment for the disciples in the book of Luke. After the death of Jesus, their hopes were dashed against the rock of their harrowing experience and were shattered into pieces. They, like us, were slow to understand that God's plans are often so radical that our feelings aren't strong enough to handle them, meaning don't consult your feelings all the time. This is why Jesus spent three and a half years trying to help them to understand that in matters concerning God, it is always best to consult faith in God more than feelings in ourselves. We are told, And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Luke 24 and verse 15. Can you imagine the scene? Their feeling of depression was so strong, so similar, that they communed in their misery. This highlights another important factor in the idea of communion. We commune when we feel similarly with the individual we spend time with. But there's a danger here. Because we can be so consumed by how we feel about something to the point where even though God is right there with us, we cannot see him at all. Check this out. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Luke 24, reading verse 15 now and 16. To commune with God, therefore, includes being close to, talking to, listening to, relating to, and having feelings in common. Jesus felt what they felt on this walk and communicated through their depression. As they listened to the stranger going over the familiar passages of Scripture, they experienced something that changed their lives forever. Now, can you imagine Jesus breaking down the Scriptures and teaching them that day? Here's what communion does for us. It causes our hearts to burn as feelings give way to faith. It causes our face to shine as what occurs on the inside emerges on the outside. And that's exactly what they said. Did not our hearts burn within us? We are told that Moses communed with God and this is what happened to him. Not only does our heart burn, our face shine. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him, meaning God. Exodus 34 and verse 35. Can you imagine a shining face and a burning heart? Here's what the psalmist has to say in describing what communion with God does. He says, Why are you so downcast, O my soul? Why are you disquieted in me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Psalm 42 and verse 5. Being so close to God provides help when we find ourselves in need. Being so close to God helps us in dealing with how we feel, being so close to God helps us with how we analyze our situations. Being in close communion with God helps us develop the trust needed to face a new day without worry, fear, and anxiousness. Being in close contact with God helps us to increase our faith. But there is more. David says this, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the health of my countenance and my God. God's closeness is not just helpful, it is also healthful. It is not just beneficial, it is healthy. If our faith is sickly, it is because we keep God far away. Being close to God makes you healthy mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. When we are close to God, it shows on our faces as our frowns turn into smiles. Friend, be close to God. When you're in close contact with God, you'll be more healthy. You will be happier. Because why? It shows on your face.